Good afternoon. My presentation focuses on geoethical considerations related to geotourism, a human activity that surely has many different meanings. Most of the world population lives in large urban agglomerations that favor the distancing of the individual from natural reality. Technological civilization tends to destroy the direct sensory dimension of human experience, mediating it through technological devices. Nature is conceived as a museum, an attraction, a recreational experience. All this continues to nourish and increase that detachment between human beings and nature, which is one of the causes of the, crisis, the ecological crisis of, of our time. It is evident the need to reconfigure the relationship between humans and nature, and geotourism can be an important help to do this. However, its function as a recreational and aesthetic satisfaction tool must also be accompanied by a formative function for those who experience it, redeveloping geotourism as an act of knowledge, awareness, and ethical training for the individual. Among the various definitions of geotourism, we refer to that one formulated in 2010 that you can read in the slide. This definition clarifies what geotourism consists of, what are its purposes, the activities that allow its use, and the different forms in which it can be expressed. The reference to the concept of conservation of geodiversity is significant because it gives to geotourism a meaning that goes beyond the scientific, aesthetic, cultural and regenerative use of the landscape by the individual. In fact, it necessarily becomes a proposal of concrete action in defense of those abiotic components that constitute its main objects of interest. A first consideration. The geotouristic experience is rich and satisfying not only when it captures the final result, when it grasps the final forms produced by geological events, such as an outcrop, geological landscape, a fossil or a mineral, but also when it understands the entire historical process that created that form the geodynamic, lithogenetic or morphological process that ultimately intersects and merges with the history of humanity itself. Grasping the temporal evolutionary process restores the sense of the grandeur of the geological phenomenon and redefines in human the perception of their position on the earth, their influence and necessity in the system of terrestrial relations highlighting the inconsistency of their egocentrism. A second consideration, geotourism can take place not only in natural areas, but also in human modified environments. This does not take away value and significance from strictly naturalistic tourism, but rather extends it to those geological elements that due to human intervention have been incorporated into the cultural, artistic, architectural and urbanistic heritage, thus creating an ideal bridge to overcome the ancient ontological fracture between human being and the natural environment, between culture and nature. In other words, in geotourism, the geological element by anthropic intervention becomes a human artifact without this implying, denying its intrinsic natural character. Therefore, geotourism is much more than just looking at landscapes. Geotourism allows you to go beyond aesthetic appreciation, beyond the recreational, intuitive, relaxing moment, to become an authentic, formative, educational tool for the human being. Moreover, while geotourism provides knowledge of the great geological processes, such as crustal movements, aesthetic changes, paleogeographic evolution, through the observation of fossils and rocks, at the same time, it favors in the geotourist a reflection on their own nature, 
the awareness of their own finitude as human beings and on the transience and vulnerability of the things that make up the Earth system. Geotourism has the potential to perceptively grasp the unity of the elements and rationally place them within a systemic interpretative framework. Here, the geotouristic, geotouristic experience becomes a moment of unity between sensory perception and rational mediation, which can allow us overcoming the reductionist perspective of modern science. Through sensory, emotional, and rational perceptions, the geotourist can become the fulcrum where the ontological unity between the, perspe the perceptive and the rational world is reconstituted. Moreover, through geotourism, we can understand our ambivalence as humans. On the one hand, our inevitable anthropocentrism of species intended only with reference to the position that anthropological innate centrality referred to the position that the human beings give to themselves in relation to the other than themselves. On the other hand, our awareness of the ecological non-centrality of the humans in the great cosmic architecture. In other words, the geotouristic experience can help to understand that the perception of centrality that one has of oneself on Earth is not in contradiction with perceiving ourselves as an integral part of nature. And so that being respectful of nature and acting responsibly towards it means to safeguard also ourselves. Finally, geotourism can go even deeper. It allows the geotourist to go beyond the contemplative intellectual or aesthetic enjoyment. Since through that aesthetic pleasure, the geotourist goes in search of that sense of individual responsibility capable of triggering the inner energy to carry out a paradigm shift of the human nature nexus. And in our view, in this lies the geoethical value of geotourism. Thank you for your attention.